At this point, your logical model should be complete. There are a few more small things we need to do before we can generate the SQL for building the database. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll first generate the relational model and tweak it a little bit. Okay, so there is the logical model and then there is the relational model and we need to generate the relational model from the logical model. Okay, so what the relational model is going to do is uh, it's closer to the physical database. Okay, so for example, in the relational model, you will see the foreign keys mentioned explicitly rather than being implicit as in the logical model. Okay, so in order to generate the relational model, what you need to do is to, within uh, Oracle Data Modeler, get the engineer button. Okay, the engineer button is located up there on top among the icons and it's just two greater than signs. So that's the forward engineering button. In other words, what we're saying is, take the logical model and move it forward to the relational model. That's what's going on there, okay? And then that shows this pop-up window that you see here. And all you have to do is uh, to click this button, the engineer button, and that will generate the relational model. Okay, there's a small point of confusion out here. The relational model seems to look like a logical model. Seems to look like an ER diagram, but it's not. Okay, the notation is similar, but things mean quite different things. Okay, so for example, it looks like there's key migration here. It's not, it means something else. Okay, we won't get into the actual details of the notation itself, just to say, don't confuse this with the logical model. This is something slightly different. You don't need to worry about any of the notations in this model itself. As long as your logical model is correct, you don't need to worry about the notation here. Okay, so important point, this is a relational model. It's not a logical model. And uh, the distinction is clear from the color, right? The logical model entity types have a different background color. This has a different background color looks like an ER diagram, but it's not an ER diagram. Similar notation, but different meanings. And uh, looks like there's key migration, but it's not. Okay, so there's nothing to freak out here about, uh, you know, I didn't use key migration, but somehow it's coming to me. No need to worry about that. Okay, again, like I said earlier, ignore the notation on this diagram. This is called the relational model. Okay, and uh, you, you see that by default, it's given a name relational one if it's the first time you're generating it. Okay, so that's what it is. If you're not seeing it, then of course, all you have to do is to click on the relational model, the plus sign, open it up and click on relational one and you will see this. Okay, so if you looked at uh, the sales order entity type in your logical model, remember this looks, this color clearly tells us that it's a logical model. Right. If you look at the sales order entity type, clearly we see that it's on the many side of a one-to-many relationship and therefore customer ID is implicitly a foreign key on sales order. Okay, not key migration, it's just a foreign key. Right, how do we make sure it's there? Well, if you go and look at the attributes of sales order, clearly you see that customer ID is indeed an attribute even though it's not showing up on the ER diagram, okay? But however, if you look at sales order, right, notice that the foreign key is actually explicitly shown here, okay? Whereas in the corresponding entity type on the ER diagram, the foreign key was not shown. So that's one small difference between the relational model and the logical model, okay? So you see that uh, the, the name of the foreign key column is customer underscore customer ID. Okay, it's just trying to make sure that uh, uh, you understand that this is a customer ID from the customer table or from the customer entity. Okay, notice also that the primary key is marked with a P and the foreign key is marked with an F. Okay, so what we're going to do, so the, you see all the foreign keys here. So for example, in order item, it's got the sales order ID and product ID as foreign keys, right? Again. It's on the many side of both of those one-to-many relationships. 
and similarly a product category membership has product id and product category id as part of the foreign key okay as foreign keys again shown with an f and a product category also has product category product id because of the unary one to many relationship okay so it's again it's a foreign key because it's a one to many relationship except that the foreign key is not really very foreign it's the primary key of that same entity type okay so the next thing we want to do are two things on the relational model one is we want to just simplify the foreign key names so instead of customer underscore customer id we just want to have customer id and so on okay and the other very important thing we want to do very very important thing is we want to make every primary key column as auto increment okay we'll we'll discuss what this actually means and you cannot do these on the logical model okay so you should not do this on the logical model so first let's change the foreign key column names i take the customer sales order entity type as an example i double click on it i see the uh, i select the attribute customer underscore customer id which is the foreign key and then here i can simply go and change the name to just customer id if i want okay so then the name of that foreign key will column will get changed okay so similarly here change this to sales order id change that to product id and again change this to product id change this to product category id and change this to parent category id because after all that's the foreign key relationship okay to indicate for any product category which category is its parent so that's the parent category id okay so in fact whenever you have unary one to many relationship then uh, you'll need to think of a suitable name for the foreign key the so called foreign key that comes in okay so change all of those foreign keys now let's for the next thing you want to do of course is to do auto increment on all the primary keys so let's understand what is auto increment okay so we already said that customer id is the primary key for customer okay obviously customer id has to be unique in the sense that no two customers can have the same id okay it has to be different for every customer okay now if that is the case then when we add a new customer does it become our responsibility then to give a number an id number which is different from anything that already exists now keeping track of that manually can be just a pain a big pain right because every time you create a new customer you have to worry about oh what number can i now use which has not been used and if you have already 1000 1500 customers you know how do you find out another number which has not been used so far okay so ideally in database systems what we really want to do is every time we add a customer we want the database to automatically generate the next number right so the first time we create a customer it may put the number 1 the next time we create a customer it's going to it can put the number 2 all by itself without us getting involved in that process of determining a custom a unique customer id okay this is what is called auto increment automatically let the system increment the id okay so let's take customer and see how do you do auto increment for customer okay again you're doing all of this on the relational model okay so you take customer open up the attributes select customer id because that's the one we are going to make auto increment okay so you see customer id okay uh, and then you uh, look at the customer id okay double click on the customer id attribute okay and then it opens up a window a dialog where you can change some properties of that customer id primary key okay notice that right within the general tab there is a checkbox for auto increment okay just check the checkbox and don't do anything else on the screen don't touch anything else just check check mark the auto increment okay so what this will do is it will start the customer id from 1 and then it will keep on increasing from there 
okay now what ids the system assigns they don't really matter all that it, we are bothered about is that every customer id is unique right so if you've got a customer id one and it somehow you delete that entity and go the next time it will be two it doesn't matter i mean nobody is going to uh, fault you for saying customer one doesn't exist at all because you deleted the doesn't matter okay if you want to further control the properties of the auto increment for example instead of starting at one suppose you want it to start at 10000 right so the very first customer you create you want the customer id to be 10000 no problem you can click on the auto increment uh, option here and you can customize it as you want so for example you may say start at 10000 and increase not by 1 but by 10 right so the first customer will be 10000 the next customer will be 10010 the next customer will be 10020 etc so you have complete control over that process okay so this auto increment button is what i was talking about okay so this is what i was saying you can select auto increment on the general tab and then you can do other things right you can do more fancy things like i was talking about start at this increment by that etc okay that's what is being shown here instead of 1 2 3 you can make it go 10 20 30 whatever you prefer okay so what we want is that same process with, that we did for customer you want to do that for every entity type all integer primary keys must be auto increment again i'm not saying must be in the sense that it cannot be otherwise it can be otherwise but i'm just saying that this is the easy way to handle things okay so that you make it easy for the system to assign unique ids you don't need to worry about it once you've set it up okay so you want to do it for customer id sales order id order item id etc but remember you want to do it only for the primary keys leave the foreign keys alone you just change the name of the foreign key that's good enough leave the foreign key alone don't go and do the foreign keys uh, make the foreign keys auto increment that can cause serious problems okay so definitely you should not make the foreign keys auto increment make the only the primary keys auto increment so obviously you're going to do it exactly six times for this diagram because there are six entity types okay so you're not going to do, any, do anything for any of the foreign keys with respect to the auto increment aspect okay so i'm just showing you which are all the things you need to do nothing else